All right. <laughs> Here we go. Um, yeah. Uh, welcome back to class. I'm sure you guys missed me in person, but here I am uh, live. Well, not live. You guys will probably watch this a few days later. I'm sure you'll watch it probably the day before class, but I do have some current events that I'd like to share with you. So hopefully you watch it tonight. I'll send it out to you tonight. Hopefully you watch it before Thanksgiving. And maybe you can argue about some of this stuff uh, with your family around the dinner table. You know, start a good old fashioned uh, family food fight, maybe. Uh, we are continuing on with our lecture on the new golden age. And today we'll actually reach the end of the new golden age. And I'll show you why this whole thing fell apart. So let's get started with some current events. I don't want to make this video too long. I'm hoping for 15 to 20 minutes. So let's let's just let's try to get to that. All right. All right. Here we go. First things first. Uh, boom. AstraZeneca, uh, pharmaceutical company out of the University of Oxford, has a new vaccine. Apparently, this is the third vaccine. They promise highly effective. <laughs> I've seen numbers anywhere from 70 to 90 percent. Take that for what you will. But the one thing that they have going for them is that it can be refrigerated in a normal refrigerator. You remember uh, the first vaccine, Pfizer has to be at negative 94 degrees. And you also might remember that the CEO of Pfizer sold off 60% of his stock the day they announced. Now you might be asking, why? Why would somebody do that? I know we talked about it. I know we said that it was gonna be difficult to trust any vaccine where a CEO sells off 60% of his stock the day they announce they have a new vaccine, well, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it has to be at negative 94 degrees. Ever since the other two vaccines have come out, Moderna and AstraZeneca, they now say that they do not need to be anywhere near negative 94 degrees. And what we're seeing right now from the Pfizer stock is it is absolutely dropping off a cliff. I think it's interesting, uh, but nobody's talking about this. <laughs> You're not gonna get. You're not gonna get this from any news. Um, this is your boy Wes bringing to you the, uh, the 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 tough stuff, the the stuff that takes a little more research. Uh, so let's let's keep going. What else we got here? Oh, crazy thing, right? I'm I, right now. I'm in beautiful Austin, Texas. Um, but the morning before my flight, I'm getting ready on Friday and I'm packing my things. I'm a late packer. <laughs> I'm a late packer. Okay. Anyways. I'm, I'm packing up my stuff and I'm watching the news as one does. And I hear over the news, the CDC is demanding that Americans do not travel. Well, Americans obviously do not listen well because 3 million people over the weekend traveled the most since March. Are you kidding me, CDC? You're going to give us this advice the Friday before we leave? Are you absolutely out of your mind? There's no way I was canceling my ticket. I actually made it all the way out here and boom, here we are. Austin freaking Texas. And let me tell you something. I've already had some amazing food. I've had chicken wings. I've I've had Mexican food. It has been just one of the most incredible trips ever. You guys, if you haven't been out to Texas, I would highly suggest you come out to Texas. We went to a great space um called wonder spaces that's where this picture is taken and you see a lot of artists um uh, installations and it was it was just really incredible uh, i have just a couple more stories for you just two more one of them is really interesting okay so let me just show you share with you this uh first of all this happened in colorado um apparently the first in and out burger was in denver uh and it opened up last weekend and there was a 14 hour line apparently people really wanted their cheeseburger they got kind of upset and apparently a brawl broke out a man loses his pants i'm i'm not going to show you the man losing his pants i'm sure you can go on youtube and find it but yes a 14 hour line would you wait that long for an animal style fries that's what i that's what i want is is in and out even that good and uh since the answer is no why is Whataburger better? That is the question. Uh, we will move on. I have one last story for you, and this story is super interesting. Check this out. Okay, so there was a metal monolith found by a helicopter crew 
in a southeastern part of Utah. Now, nobody knows where this came from. It was obviously put there. It doesn't look natural. Uh, the question is, is it aliens? Is it an artist? Is it a practical joker? Uh, apparently, um, they found this using a helicopter while they were counting sheep. And it's 12 feet tall. You can see here, this man is six foot tall. That is definitely a 12 foot tall monolith. And it was in the middle of nowhere. Nobody could easily access it. Um, and it looks like it's buried deep into the stone, the actual uh, red rock that is there. I found it to be completely interesting. I don't know what you guys think about this. I don't know who put it there. Could it be some new wave artist? Could it be some fan of, you know, Stanley Kubrick's 2001? Uh, if you haven't seen 2001, it's kind of a 70s style sci-fi flick. But in that movie, you see a monolith much like this one. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just find it to be completely interesting. I, I can't wait to get back to you guys next week so we can kind of discuss a little bit more as to wh why this thing even uh, appeared. But uh, yeah, let's get to the lecture because today we're going to talk about the, the new American Golden Age and perhaps the end of it. So I don't want to get too deep into this lecture because I think this lecture delves heavily on conversation, but I want to introduce to you a few ideas and then we'll go from there, okay? When I last left you, we had talked about the savings and loan crisis of the 80s and how deregulation had pretty much blown up all the savings and loans. So after that, we had um, a new golden age erupt. Uh, and, and really what drove a lot of this was, first of all, we were in a time of peace. The Cold War had ended. My friends, the Cold War had ended, and you know what? We went through an extreme 10-year to 12-year period of peace from 1989 to 2001. And we had a president, uh, we had, uh, Bill Clinton, uh, Bill Jeffrey Clinton. Uh, and he came out playing the saxophone on many late-night shows. He thought he was the cool, hip president. It was the cool, hip era. Look at the colors. Look at the colors of this picture. Everything was neon. Um... Of course, there was there was some problems. I don't know. You may you, we might talk about this in class, but you may remember the uh, the riots in L.A. Uh, not unlike the riots that we had uh, about six months ago, but we'll talk about the riots in L.A. Maybe uh, maybe next time when we compare it to these riots. But new technology brought a new era of wealth to America. All of a sudden, you remember everybody now has TVs. Everybody has all these things, but space was the next frontier. You know, we had this Hubble telescope that could see far beyond uh, our little realm of elf, uh, earth, not elf, earth, not, not elf, it's earth. We also had the, the advent of the personal computer. Remember, uh, up to this point, computers took up rooms, even. And in the 80s, I know they got smaller. We had, we even got gaming consoles in the 80s, but... It wasn't until the 90s where we saw the, the personal computer spread to the, to the actual home. Um, and I think we also had uh, in the advent of massive storage space. We say massive, but at the time, it felt like massive. We had DVDs and CDs. These, these forms of storage space allowed us to keep a lot uh, of, of, of new music, data, everything. Everything just started to explode when we started talking about things like uh, in computing and data storage and things like that. But one of the most important things, the thing that allows me to put this video to you right now is the advent of the internet. The internet blew up everything. Everybody wanted to start a business. Everybody thought that they could make, they could make it. All of a sudden the American dream was alive again. You could do things. You could uh, create the website of your dreams. Do you remember chat rooms? Chat rooms. You went on there with strangers and you typed sentences with hundreds of other people typing sentences. And for some reason, people did this for hours at a time. For hours. Yes, 
the internet. Uh, very interesting. But what the internet did do for us was it actually, while it led this growth in the 90s, uh, it also brought us great tragedy um, eventually. You can see right here around 2000, 2000, we saw a steep decline. And why? So we remember this is this is where we were at when it comes to the savings and loan crisis. The internet and the era of new golden age brought us out of this red and into the black. But eventually, it wouldn't be long before we seep back down. And we're gonna get to this point right here. This is this is this is the next point I want to talk to you guys about. Um, the dot com crash. You can see right here around March two thousand we completely fall off a cliff we completely fall off a cliff and why we do that why do we fall off a cliff because of the dot-com crash well it's it's fairly interesting um i, I, I i'll read it to you because i know my, my face is in the way but cause okay the cause of the dot-com crash excessive speculation in internet based companies because everybody thought they could get rich from the internet you started seeing companies like pets.com. They would sell you a pet over the internet. They would sell dog toys. And they thought, oh my gosh, this is gonna be great. There was there was cats.com. Pictures of cats. Every e-toys. Why buy your toys? You know what the, the, why buy toys? Why to go to Walmart? Why go to Toys R Us? Um, things like boo.com. You wanna be scared? Go to boo.com. You know? Um, there was so many companies out there that thought that they could make their millions online and they were getting their message across. But the problem was, the one problem, I know it's covered up and I'll read it to you right now. It says monetization. Monetization was the singular issue with all of these companies. They did not have a singularly good way because technology just hadn't caught up to it yet to monetize their product. They were not able to turn profits. Some people might have even had great ideas, but they didn't have a way to make money on their goods. Monetization would soon become a thought. There would be monetization like classes that you could go to to learn how to monetize your product. But we hadn't thought about it that deeply yet. Eventually we would, and we'll get there. We'll get there in a couple of weeks when we start talking about social media, Facebook, and the like. Uh, but one other thing happened that absolutely killed the new golden age of the 90s. And of course, we have to talk about it. We have to talk about 9-11. Um, I'm not going to get into too much uh, about it here because this is going over YouTube and you know, I want a future. I want a, I want a future. Uh, maybe perhaps in politics. Who knows? So I don't want to get uh, too woo, woo. That's what we should do is talk about the official government story okay here's the official government story this is what you should know about 9-11 first of all the government says the 9-11 commission report they say that 16 terrorists plotted against america by learning one how to fly planes in a school down in florida and then the morning of 9-11 they took box cutters now, at the time, remember, airports weren't as secure as they are now, right? You could just go literally from your car onto a plane. It was the greatest era of American flight, I think, we'll ever have. But now, uh, these people brought on box cutters, tiny little knives. Now, the story says that they took these box cutters, box cutters and they took over four planes, four aircraft four commercial aircraft. Now, what you're viewing here is the second aircraft that hit the Twin Towers. These Twin Towers would eventually come down. And this would be uh, kind of the simulation. One would hit from one side, the other hit from the other side. The story is that the fires and the heat that came from these fires would melt the steel beams in the center of the World Trade Center and eventually both would come toppling down, um, killing all that was left inside. In total, we have almost 3,000 dead uh, from this tragic terrorist incident. 
we'll we'll get into that. But look, there was one, there was two other planes. Uh, we'll only get into another plane here. The other plane is the attack on the Pentagon. We can see here that a plane, one of these commercial airliners, so says the government. The government tells us this in the 9/11 the 9/11 Commission report that a plane swooped down and would stay almost 30 feet from the ground for an extended period of time before it crashed into the Pentagon. Now, I know what you're wondering. Where is the plane parts? Where is the wing indentions on this building? Maybe we'll talk about that later. Maybe we won't. I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to get too deep, but I will say this. There does exist questions about this. There absolutely does exist questions about this. And these will be some of the things that we um, talk about in class next week on Tuesday. I hope uh, that you guys have the greatest, literally the greatest Thanksgiving. I want you to talk about some of this stuff with your family. Uh, I would like to hear what they have to say uh, over the Thanksgiving break. And I will see you guys on Tuesday. I, I hope that you guys watch this before Tuesday. It will really help you with our discussion. Um, but I wish you guys the best. And I hope that you guys have a great Thanksgiving, and I will see you guys on Tuesday. Bye, guys.